Let's talk about balancing reaction equations. Here's the essential question. How do I balance a chemical reaction equation to follow the law of conservation of mass? Let's do a little bit of a review. Remember, we talked about reaction e equations in a previous notes, and here is one of the equations that we wrote. Now, we had to take time to write the entire equation out, starting with the reactants, magnesium and hydrochloric acid, and then we had to write the products as well, magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Now, when we write reaction equations, there's a few things we should watch out for, some tricky things that might trick us up a little bit. One of those is ionic versus covalent compounds. We need to make sure that we treat ionic compounds based on their charges, and covalent compounds, we can find the subscripts based on the prefix and the name. Acids, if we see acids, we need to know to look on the periodic table to find those acids and to write them as such. And if we ever see any diatomic elements, that's the special seven that we find on the periodic table, then we need to know to put a little two next to it in order to do that. So we take a lot of time write us, writing this reaction equation, but it's not quite finished. All right, so I want to look at this equation with a little bit of detail, and I want to relate it to this really important concept called the law of conservation of mass. Now, the law of conservation of mass states that atoms are neither created or destroyed in a chemical reaction, and the quantity of atoms must be conserved. So let's take a look at our reaction that we just wrote. So first we have magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Those particles right here are going to be used to create these substances over here on the product side. So let's try to do that. All right, first First, we're going to take magnesium and chlorine, and we're going to make magnesium chloride. Now, you might have just noticed something wrong. What happened was, even though we started with one magnesium and one chlorine, in our product side, we somehow added an extra chlorine. This does not obey the law of conservation of mass. We can't just magically create an atom out of nowhere. Same thing, if we take the hydrogen from the reactant side and try to make the hydrogen from the product side, it says H2. Where did that extra hydrogen come from? So this reaction is actually not correctly written, at least not yet. So let's start over from the beginning and see if we can figure it out. Instead, we got to think about the quantities of particles. One thing we haven't written are the coefficients. In fact, instead of having one hydrochloric acid, what if we had two hydrochloric acid molecules or two moles of hydrochloric acid? Well, if we were to do this reaction now, taking the magnesium and the chlorine and combining them together, and the two hydrogens and combining them together, this makes a lot more sense. And this reaction obeys the law of conservation of mass. So that leads me to a very important concept called balancing chemical equations. Chemical equations must obey the law of conservation of mass. Unfortunately, reaction descriptions often don't tell us chemical quantities, so it's our job to balance them by adding the correct coefficients, which is what I'm going to teach you how to do right now. Before we do that, here are a few balancing tips. The first tip you should do before you even balance, so before you talk about coefficients, make sure that your compound formulas are correctly written, i.e. make sure you know how to write ionic and covalent compounds. The coefficients are the absolute last step in writing a chemical reaction. Now, when you balance, you should only change coefficients, never touch the subscripts. That includes polyatomic ions or the ionic compounds that you've made or the covalent compounds. If elements are in multiple compounds, you might want to save them for later. Sometimes they get a little bit messy, but save the complicated ones for later and things might work out. Sometimes things become unbalanced. Just keep trying and keep doing it. I call this the clean your rooms symptom. Sometimes you start cleaning one area of your room and then go to clean another only to find that the original area gets dirty again. If you just keep going, eventually things will be cleaned up. Lastly, treat polyatomic ions as a single unit, and I'll give you an example of these in our, in our next few practices. All right, so here's a practice. Zinc 2 sulfide plus oxygen gives you zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. That's a chemical reaction equation. Now, we're going to need to write the, the different compounds based on all the different hints we saw before, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. Again, if you're struggling writing ionic or covalent compounds, you should really go back and review those. The first one is zinc 2 sulfide. That's zinc 2, so zinc with a positive 2 charge, and sulfur is a minus 2 charge, so there's one of each of those. Oxygen, in this case, is one of the special diatomic elements, so we have to write it as O2. Zinc oxide, so in this case, zinc is still a plus 2 charge, and oxygen is is a minus two charge, so there's one zinc and one oxygen going together. Lastly, sulfur dioxide is a covalent compound, so that's one sulfur and two oxygens. Let's check to see if this formula is balanced. 
This is another way we can balance a reaction by accounting for each side. Let's start with the reactants. Let's, first, we see that there's on the reactant side, there's only one zinc element. There's only one sulfur element, and there are two oxygen elements. On the right-hand side, or the product side, there is one zinc element, so that's balanced and good. There's one sulfur element, but there's three oxygen elements on the right. So this reaction is not balanced. It is not obeying the law of conservation of mass, and it's our job to fix it by adding coefficients. So I'm not going to touch any of the subscripts. For example, this two here, this two here, and I'm not going to change any of the little numbers at the bottom, but I can add coefficients to the front. Let's start with the oxygen on the right side. I don't like the fact that the oxygen on the right is three or an odd number. That doesn't go into the oxygen on the left very well. So I'm going to times this odd oxygen right here by two. What that does is it changes both my zinc and my oxygen. I have to add a coefficient. I cannot just add a little subscript down here because that's going to change zinc oxide's formula. So now that I have two zincs on the right side and four oxygens on the right side, I, I kind of mess things up a little bit on my left side. So I'm going to go ahead and add a coefficient in front of the zinc 2 sulfide to fix my zincs. Now that changes my zincs, but it also changes my sulfur. Again, I'm kind of trying to clean things up and it's getting a little bit more messy, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to my product side and I'm going to multiply that compound by two as well. That changes the number of sulfurs, but it also changes the numbers of oxygens. We have two times two oxygens, four right here, but don't forget we also have two oxygens here, so we have six total oxygens. All right, we've finally gotten back to the oxygens, and six is a number that two can go into. If we multiply our O2 by three, we're going to get six oxygens on the reactant side. Sometimes it's a lot of tedious work to be able to figure out how to balance the reaction, but the more practice you have, the better. In fact, here's a practice for you. See if you can figure this one out. Try to use some of those hints we saw before. Did you try it yourself? All right, let's see if we can do it together. On the reactant side, we have sodium, chlorine, copper, and we're going to keep nitrate together. There's one sodium, one chlorine, one copper, and this little subscript 2 on the outside of nitrate represents that there's two nitrates. We can do this because we find nitrate on the other side. On the product side, we have one sodium, we have two chlorines, we have one copper, and we only have one nitrate. So there's our nitrate right there. All right, we need to go ahead and balance this. I'm going to start by putting a 2 in front of this first reactant because I want to make sure that my chlorines become balanced. So just focusing on my chlorines, my chlorines now become two on my reactants and they're two on the product, so we're good there. Unfortunately, by adding that coefficient, I kind of screwed up my sodium. So I'm going to go to the product side and fix my sodiums by adding a coefficient in front of sodium nitrate. All right, so that changes my sodiums to be a two. And it also changes my nitrate to be a 2 as well, because this 2 foils into both the sodium as well as the nitrate itself. And hey, that actually was really helpful. That helped balance our reaction. If you look, this reaction now with those coefficients obey the law of conservation of mass. All right, that's the end of our notes. Take the time to review these notes and highlight key terms. You might want to ponder and ask some questions and summarize by answering the essential question in a deep way. Good luck.